Guys, it's Defend for you here, and here's some footage of me at Tension in Lincoln. Go check them out; they're going to be in the description below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see some more VR. But this is my time in the vibe. Here we can begin. <laughs> First, let's calibrate the pod movement system. Press the left trigger to activate pod movement controls. Move the left controller forward to move your pod forward. Now move the controller down to move your pod down. Now move the controller right to rotate your pod to the right. Next, move the controller left to rotate your pod to the left. Press the touchpad on the left controller to move the pod left and right. Calibration complete. I've unlocked the pod's movement controls to allow you to move around freely. Your pod is equipped with a time dilation device. Put simply, we can freeze time. Press the left grip to toggle time freeze on. Press the left grip again to resume normal time flow. A group of prehistoric turtles. Their appearance is quite different from that of their modern relatives. Why don't you tag one with a probe so we can get a closer look at its physiology? According to these readings, they're Solnhofia, proto-sea turtles, if you will. Hmm, curious. They seem to prefer swimming in a tight group. Go ahead and tag three more Solnhofia with probes. Perhaps the additional information will help us interpret their behavior. Press the right grip to fire a tracker. The Solnhofia are displaying signs of agitation. Perhaps a predator is near. A Pliosaurus is the most likely predator. Perhaps they gather here in the hopes of avoiding being eaten. The Pliosaurus is one creature you definitely don't want to antagonize. I've marked an escape path. Just in case, of course. The safety protocols recommend moving on to the next research area as quickly as possible.
Press the right touchpad to open the scanner menu and select the scan icon. Now select the scan icon. Calibrations completed. Scanners always need calibrating. <laughs> There it is, the lead Sicthus. It really does dwarf every other fish on record. Magnificent. Now for the tricky part. We'll need to venture into its open mouth to scan its gill rakers. Careful though, it will bite. Slowing the lead sickness will make this much easier. Remember your time dilation ability. Excellent navigation. Now scan the gill rakers on each side of the mouth before it notices us. Marvelous performance. You've exceeded all our predictions. Terminating Jurassic Simulation Program. Please hold. Welcome to the Mondo Museo's Temporal Research Facility in Svalbard. I think the doctor is going to be very pleased. Oh, transmission incoming. You'll want to pay close attention to this one. So exciting. I love new beginnings. Welcome back to the Mondo Museo International Research Mission. I'm Elisabeth Lacroix. I hope you enjoyed your first dive into history. Now that you've proven your ability to withstand time travel, you will be stationed in Svalbard, Norway. Home to a trove of marine life that thrived as much as three... Rob? Rob? Rob, are you there? Doctor, how may we assist? It's, it's Ali. Ali. He's, He's called again. He's probably just burnt out. We've been pushing the section leaders hard. But I still need his results. Could you take the cadet out to retrieve the data, please? Doctor, this cadet is still new. I worry that it... I know you are worried, Rob. I still need you to do it. Ah, an order. Very well. Well, what an excellent opportunity to advance, cadet. How long will it take? With the lag we'll pick up coming back, I estimate a few weeks on your end. Good. Go now. now. Yes, Doctor. Well, Cadet, it looks like we'll continue to work together closely. My name is Roberto, by the way. But please, call me Rob. You probably have questions. We can review Ali's, I mean, your first official mission brief, when you're ready. The pod you're controlling has been designed to withstand the stresses of temporal relocation. 
and keep you safe from harm during your travels. Once docking is complete, the portal will transport us back to the specified time and location where it is deemed most likely that we'll find our all systems are now online and operational. Prepare for temporal relocation in three, two, one. Let's have a look at the assignment. Ali's primary research target was the Pliosaurus. Latin translation, more lizard. You'll see why. The Pliosaurus is one of the top predators of its time. We need more information about how it hunts. I strongly advise a cautious approach to avoid its powerful jaws. Teleportation complete. When you're ready, Focus your view on the shutter controls. Let's get started. Ali ran into trouble here. Pliosaurus thought his pod was prey. See how they patrol. You must avoid detection at all costs. Those boulders in the center seem like an ideal hiding place. Make your way there to confirm. Tag the more aggressive one so we can get a better idea of what we're dealing with here.
hypothesis confirmed. It's definitely a Pliosaurus. Hmm, it is strange that two Pliosauruses would choose to stay in such close proximity to each other. Most apex predators are notoriously territorial. Is it possible they share a hunting ground? Tag the other and see. is male and the other is female perhaps we found a mating pair if so I would expect them to be on the hunt for additional food one theory suggests they use their eyes as their primary method of tracking prey an eye scan would seem like a logical place to begin our investigation The theory appears to be well-founded. The eye of the Pliosaurus is highly developed, though they would perform poorly in low-light situations. 
Let's do our best to remain out of sight. Let's examine the anatomy of the female Pliosaurus. If they are a mating pair, I'd expect her to be carrying several eggs. I have unlocked a new tool for the purpose. The echography scan. It will let us see a creature's internal systems in detail. Use your echography scan to gain some insight. Extraordinary. The Pliosaurus is carrying a fetus, which means they give live birth. The doctor will want to see this. The pair is no doubt here hunting the smaller creatures I've detected below. Let's head down to see what creatures the Pliosauruses find so appetizing. Tag three, so that we can identify them with certainty. Ophthalmosauruses. They seem to navigate quite easily, despite being so far down. Scan an ophthalmosaurus's eyes. Perhaps they are well adapted to see in dim light. According to my database, they have one of the largest eyes of any creature proportionally. And each eye contains a set of bones, the sclerotic ring. If we can determine how deep they can dive, it will give us a good idea of whether the bones are used to help maintain the shape of their eyes, or serve some other purpose. An echography scan of its lungs should give us a sense of how low they can go. According to my calculations, they should be capable of dives of over 20 minutes at depths of 500 meters due to the pressure at those depths. Deformation of the eye would be of great concern. The sclerotic ring must guard against it. Are the Pliosauruses really hunting? 
The Ophthalmosauruses? They seem unwilling to descend to this depth. Tag an Ophthalmosaurus with a probe to force it to surface. Excellent. I've temporarily modified the probe to allow it to gather metabolic information from within the Pliosaurus. We're lucky. The probe was not crushed when the Pliosaurus ate the Ophthalmosaurus. We may gather valuable metabolic data from the Pliosaurus. Use an echography scan on the Pliosaurus to locate the probe. I'll download what it recorded. Pliosaurus has a high metabolism and maintains a core temperature higher than that of the surrounding water. This area is fascinating, but the data we've gathered must be uploaded and analyzed. Please scan the portal to initiate the transport sequence. systems are now online and operational. Prepare for temporal relocation in three, two, one. There seems to be an ever so slight problem. And no need to panic. A minor glitch, I'm sure. I'll just reboot this. Welcome back to Svalbard. I can't wait to upload your data on Pliosaurus and Ophthalmosaurus. Rob, are you there? Yes, apologies, Doctor. That that thing disrupted communications. Yes, it, it looks, looks like Stonefish. I'll analyze the logs. Thank you. I, I wish we had more time to spend on this. But I'm afraid our worst hypothesis are catching up with us. Rob, I have to issue a book Very risky, Doctor. I'm where? Do you have a visual? Cadet, when we built this station, four samples revealed something terrible. An ancient virus, perhaps millions of years old, trapped beneath the ice. With global temperature rising and ice receding, we knew it could spread. And well... 
Doctor, Ali tested positive, didn't he? Yes. So we need to ramp up our search for a cure. Cadet, we've been collecting data from the past to understand what effect the virus had on prehistoric hosts and what to expect if anyone contracts it now. This is what the data you've been scanning is for. Yes. And, and we need you even more now. We have to develop a cure before the worst comes to pass. We need a breakthrough. If we just 